If you want what I think is the perfect combination of size, refresh rate and resolution for gaming, what monitor do you buy? It's an absolute minefield of different options out there, so in this video I want to walk you through it carefully with some of my favourite options for all different reasons. But first, a message from this video sponsor, Azrock, and their Z490 line of motherboards, including the Z490 Tai Chi. These are suitable for Intel 10th generation and future core processors, features 14 phase Dr. Moss power design, as well as Nehemic audio for a great listening and gaming experience. You also get PCIe Gen 4 hardware ready, and you get, of course, Azrock Polychrome Sync RGB for all of your lighting needs. Check out the link below in the description to find out more. Now if money is no object to you, then I have the perfect monitor for you to go and pick up. It's Gigabyte's FI27Q-P and it costs around £600. Now for that you do get a pretty impressive spec sheet. 1440p, 27 inch, 165Hz, IPS and G-Sync compatible. And if you think that's a lot of features to all cram into one monitor, it gets better because it has pretty much everything else you would hope to have in a top of the line monitor from USB hubs to Windows software that can control every monitor setting to backlight strobing and a whole lot more. Like I said, it's an IPS panel which means that the colours are incredibly vibrant, they very much pop off the screen when you're watching movies or whatever else, and it's a fantastic gaming experience. Thanks to an incredibly impressive panel, it gets pretty bright at over 400 nits in SDR mode, not quite bright enough for HDR but still good enough nonetheless, and it has an incredibly impressive response time, the black to white response time of just 3 to 4 milliseconds, and an incredibly low input lag of just 1.5 milliseconds. It also happens to cover 95% of the DCI-P3 spectrum, which makes it incredibly well suited for both gamers and content creators and people who like to mix both. When you put all of that together into a monitor, you get an incredibly impressive, incredibly smooth, responsive and enjoyable gaming experience with a lot of functionality on the side too. It's a truly top tier monitor and if, like I said, money is no object, it's a very good option you should definitely check out. Now of course not everybody has cash to spare and if you're looking for a more reasonably priced option then the one that's sitting next to me is hands down the best option you can buy. It's Acer's VG271 UP or US and it is phenomenal. It actually features an IPS panel as well, still 27 inches, still 144 or 165 hertz, depending which model you buy, and still FreeSync and therefore G-Sync compatible too. And it's truly phenomenal. It costs just 350 or 360 pounds. And for that money, there's almost no difference between this panel and the Gigabyte one. You'd be splitting hairs to call it any worse at only maybe one millisecond slower in the black to white response time and what 1.8 millisecond input lag instead of 1.5. It really is phenomenal how much you can get for your money with this monitor. Now there is one area that does let the, the VG down which is its stand which honestly doesn't really qualify as being able to use that noun because it is not fantastic. As you can see, anytime I do any level of movement, the thing shakes like mad, but for the price that you're paying and the fact that it has a vase amount on the back, I would pick up a monitor arm and be very, very happy with my purchase. Now, if you still can't afford all of the things that I'm clearly shilling for here, then AOC CQ27 GTU is possibly your best bet. You do have to downgrade from the nice IPS panels I've been talking about to a curved VA one, and it still is a little bit worse overall. You do have technically double the response time of seven to eight milliseconds, and the input lag is more like three or four milliseconds instead of 1.5 or 1.8. But when you play games on it, you don't really notice. Yes, ghosting is more prevalent on that VA panel, but when I was actually playing with it, I didn't notice. It still felt like a very smooth, responsive and enjoyable gaming experience and it still happens to cover 90% of the DCI-P3 spectrum which means it's still suitable for the, the gamer who likes to edit on the site. It even comes with a much nicer stand than the Acer one for a full £80 less at £280 instead. 
Unfortunately, just like the Acer one, you might have trouble finding it in stock, but I will leave links to all of the monitors I talk about in this video in the description down below for you to check out. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. With that said, there are some other notable uh, mentions that you might want to check out, especially if you can't find uh, one of the ones that I've talked about in stock in your area or just in stock in general. If you prefer a larger display, most of the ones I've been talking about here are 27 inches, which is my personal preference. But if you do want a larger display, say 32 inches instead, Gigabyte's G32QC is a decent option, if a little overpriced for what you get. The panel is a VA panel, but is remarkably impressive and just a, a very good option if a little more expensive and the stand isn't quite as good as I would like. Now, if you can't find the FI27Q-P in stock, ViewSonic do make an alternative that you might want to check out instead. It's the XG270QG and for all intents and purposes, it's the same as the Gigabyte one, but at least here in the UK, it's around 120 or so pounds more expensive for essentially the same monitor. So if you can find the Gigabyte one, I would get that one instead. It's a better value of money while providing the same stuff. But if you can't find it, the ViewSonic one isn't a bad option too. And there are also a whole load of other, especially VA monitors like the MAG272 CQR that you might want to check out. But with this Acer one being the price that it's at, I'm not sure that I could justify, recommend, or even buying anything else. This is truly a standout monitor and is uh, something that I, I cannot not recommend. So definitely go check that out, unless it's not in stock. Oh, and if you're after an even cheaper 1440p higher refresh rate monitor, then there are a number of TN options that you can check out. I've actually reviewed a couple of them, one from MBEST and one from Element Gaming, which are essentially the same thing. Right now, it seems like most of them aren't in stock or being sold, so you might have to have a hunt around on places like eBay instead, but they can be a very, very good value for money at more like 200 to 240 pounds instead. Now, with that said, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. If I've missed any monitors that you think should have been included, feel free to let me know in those comments down below, and I will do my best to get hold of it and see how well it holds up. I'd also love to know your thoughts about the, the list in general and if you have picked up a 1440p high refresh rate monitor, which one did you go with? And if you haven't, which one would you go with out of this list or just in general? Otherwise, there is a load of links in the description you can check out. The links to the monitors themselves, but there's also a whole load of other links, including Patreon if you want to get ad-free videos, or if you aren't watching this on Patreon, the sponsor for this video. There's also a load of other links like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other cool designs, and a load of affiliate links that you can use from people like Overclocks UK and uh, a load of other stuff too. I'm going to leave some other reviews for the monitors I've talked about in this video on the end card, so feel free to check those out and as always before you actually go and buy any of the monitors make sure you check out multiple reviews to see how well it holds up in other people's tests and not just one idiot's otherwise that is pretty much it if you have any questions feel free to leave those in the comments down below but otherwise we'll see you all in the next video